Alrighty, I've already done one recording with how to play Palaces of Carrera. I recommend you check that out before this one. I'm going to move fairly quickly just to get to the main highlights. This particular game, the main objective is to get 30 victory points with two players. This gives no bonus at the end of the game. The next is the object objective. Three sets of two identical pairs. Having multiple objects of the same type can split into multiple pairs as long as they're an even number. You cannot split two different types of objects and call them a pair. They must be the same type. The final actual objective to end the game is building an 8-cost building, which everyone's always going to do in this game because they're so powerful. However, where you build your 8-cost buildings will give extra bonus points. And then the final scoring bonus card is scoring any two cities of your choice. These will be the ones that give the highest bonus. Keep in mind that coins do convert to victory points, so it might not be a victory point city or a purely victory point city that is worth the most. This is just going to give me an incentive to build multiple buildings on the same cities and as far to the left as possible to get as much out of it. Alright, now when you start the game, you start spinning the wheel and taking bricks. I don't really have any advice for what's the ideal number and type of bricks to get. I normally spend just a little bit of money until we get a little further into the game, then I'll start spending some more. Um, it is important to have lots of bricks. It is important to have expensive types of bricks. So there I bought out one big chunk for four coins. That was definitely worth it. And we have some really expensive uh, building tiles coming up. He's going to take the cheap one. Makes perfect sense. You can get a little bit ahead, and no matter how I take these, I'm going to keep spinning good stuff his direction. Um, I do find that I frequently clear out an entire wedge, unless there's an expensive type that I'm not looking for, or I was doing it primarily just to fill up um, a number of building tiles for eight costers. So I'm just going to skip on past this until I start to buy which should be soon because I only have two coins left. Um, here I chose not to spin it so I don't need to get any refreshed tiles because there was a green right here that was free. I can just let it pass on to him, get one free tile, and then he can spin it and spend a little bit of money. Now actually taking that one green for free I probably should have spun it and spent one coin to get three bricks instead of just one green that would have been pretty decent because the red would be just as good as the green actually better and then these other two could help me build some big stuff but I left that for him because I am a smart person okay I'm probably gonna take these two reds and now I'm out of money so I'm probably gonna stop buying bricks unless I'm just going for free ones uh, probably just need to count and see what I've got. Okay, I want to build on Pisa, on Viragio, or on Lurisi. I have no idea how to say these names, so just forgive me for butchering them. I have never heard of any of these places before except for the Leaning Tower of Pisa. That's all I know. Anyway, um, I have no idea where Carrera is or if it's a real place. I kind of feel like it is, but uh, I didn't do any research on that. What am I going to do? I am going to buy an 8 cost building because all I needed to use was one extra yellow, my reds and my greens, to build an Ombragio. Why did I pick a land type of building, you ask? Well, there's a 5 cost for that same type. I really probably should have went for shield because there were two coat of arms buildings out here, so I'd be more likely to make sure I match and can score that entire category of building. Uh, but that's all right. I'm going for land buildings primarily because of this upgrade tile. If I can grab that upgrade tile, this 30 points thing will be easy. But I can still build them in places worth coins so that I can get easy money during the beginning of the game to keep buying bricks and keep doing stuff. It's important to be able to do stuff in this game. I know, right? Who'd have thunk? All right. Now what's going to happen? Well, there's still this five cost flag out here. Um, I want that. The question is, where do I build it? I can use all of my really expensive gray tiles and a yellow and a blue to build it in Massa or Lurcy, but I don't really want to put all of those expensive building tiles into that. So instead, I'm going to spend five black and one blue, and I'm going to put this flag building back in Lurcy. It's going to give me 
Five more victory points whenever I score land buildings, which I'm perfectly fine with. That's a decent trade. It's going to give me five more money when I spin flags. And it only cost me mostly black, which cost me nothing. In fact, the blue, I think, was free, too. I think I got it further up the wheel. So I didn't spend anything to be able to get that. And that's going to give me some money to work with. But now I'm broke. There are no more flag buildings for me to buy out there on the field. So I'm probably going to score right now. I don't really see why I wouldn't. Oh, Daryl went ahead and bought Nate Coster. Let's see what he upgraded. He upgraded Luca. That's pretty good because now he's got a city building, which are worth coins in general just for the entire category. Um, he's got an 8 coster in a big city. That's got a 19 point bonus, I believe it is. Yes, 19 point bonus at the end of the game. And since he upgraded it, every time it scores, he gets one coin along with those three victory points. So 24 victory points and 8 coins, that's a pretty great trade. He's doing very well for the start of this game. Yes, I scored my flags, or Castellos, or Castelli, whatever they're called. So I score both of these, giving me 21 coins total from the two places, 8 victory points and 2 flags. I have my first set of objects. It's very important that I pay attention to objects this game, since Daryl has literally 24 points in one scoring. If he can build one more building there, score the city, and uh, score the gate types, the portas, then he's going to have the 30 victory points. He's got Nate Coster, so all he needs is three pairs to end the game super early. If he tries to rush me rather than to collect a whole bunch of points, he might end this game super early. Me, on the other hand, I can basically do the same thing. I can decide whether I want to rush it or whether I want to delay. He, skilled the por he scores the Porta, gets himself 28 victory points. He's almost to the objective. Eight coins, he's got a little bit of money, and two objects. Now, I noted in my rule book, see all these are at five? There are two gates missing, and I don't have them. That means he has them. When it's a two-player game, you know exactly what objects people have. If you're not playing a two-player game, or you're playing a high-end tournament game you really want to win, you can always take note of which types of bricks people have bought, which type of bricks people have sold, which objects they've collected, so that you know exactly what the scoring looks like. When you're playing turn-based, it's perfectly okay to take the time to count, because no one's waiting on you. When you play this game in person or real-time, it's very rude just to delay the game for four minutes while you count up what is my total score, what is their total score if the game were to end right now. That's uh, not normally a good thing. You want to get a better just general judge. Now again, I'm just buying a whole bunch of bricks, collecting up. I have a lot of money to work with still. I have 17 left, and I don't mind spending it. You'll notice I did not spend the wheel because those two bricks were both completely free. I'm going to let Daryl spin it and add a whole bunch of bricks onto the board in one spot. I like that. But it's sort of a game of chicken. Okay, now I'm building and I'm spending my five gray bricks, the biggest ones, to build a five cost shield or villa with the coat of arms on it way out here. The main reason I'm doing that is, again, I'm going to get victory points for all of my land. Now I'm going to be going for a set of uh, coat of arms objects. And at the end of the game, since I get to score any city, this is now exactly 15 points already. Uh, that's a nice end of the game bonus. I like building way out there, especially when score two cities of your choice is a thing. Okay. Remember how I said I have a lot of money? I have the opportunity to get a lot of bricks. I had intentionally not spun the wheel earlier, and I had intentionally not spent it to buy earlier, so that way I would be the one to get this option. Check how much money this is going to cost me. I am going to spend 11 coins of my 17, but I just gained 6 bricks all at once. Now I can very easily drop some more good stuff. Also look at the type of bricks. My greens, three and four red, I only need one of the yellows to be able to make another eight coster in an upgraded city. I've already upgraded Viragio. I want to score Viragio. 
He's not competing for me with a stack there, so he's not going to... Well, actually, now maybe he is. So I have to watch just in case he decides that he's going to build three, three buildings there real fast and try to score it on the board before I can. If he does, I have to race him and get there first. But I'm going to go ahead and build my eight coster and put it there. And as far as my upgrade goes, he's not competing with me for the land buildings, but there are so many points on this upgrade that I'm going to take it right now. Um, you'll notice this is 16, 21, 26. So getting that upgrade tile is worth a guaranteed 26 points more if I can build any more of these land buildings before I score it. That's really nice. So putting that eight coster, paying for it, and choosing the upgrade to go for really big scoring. Now, all I have to do is score that one thing, and I have more than the 30 points. All I need is two more sets of objectives. If I score Shield right now, that'll get me one more set. If I score Viragio, I need another building there first. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing this villa, because then I'd have two coat of arms. And that would give me everything I need to have all the sets of objects. I can end the game in basically three turns. If I build a... Oh, actually, see this flag right here? If I build a one-cost flag in Viragio, and then I score Viragio, that'll give me another two flags and one coat of arms. Well, two flags gets me another set. One coat of arms only gets me one. But then if I score the coat of arms right after that, I get two more. Does that give me three sets? No, but I can buy a coat of arms off of the board to end up with a total of the one from this city score, the two from scoring itself, and then one more here for four coat of arms and uh, four flags. Gives me not just three pairs, but four pairs for extra victory points. I can totally do that. And if I was trying to be real mean to Daryl, I probably should just buy this flag, score Viragio, score the shields, or, well, before I do that, score the upgrade tile, get as many points from all these land as I can, and then end the game. So one, two, so one to build, one to score the city, one to score the land tiles, and then one to score shields. I can end the game in four turns. I'm not going to. I'm going to actually milk even more points out of this game. The main thing that I haven't maximized yet is the score two cities of your choice. I can do better on that. So what I'm going to do instead, I don't think he's rushing the game. I'm going to go for an even bigger score just to make sure I have this. I'm going to collect a few bricks here. They're cheap. But now I have eight to build another eight cost building and take an upgrade tile. So now is where I'm going to rush the end of the game. I'm going to grab any of these eight costers. I don't particularly care which one. Throw it in their C, which I don't particularly care about. Oops. I hope that doesn't ruin things when I hit back. Please stay at the same point. Oh, no. I've ruined my video. Well, you know what? I'm just going to keep hitting go forward. Actually, you know what? I was so close to the end of the game, I'm going to hit go to end of the game. This replay is not going to interrupt. Uh, where I was, I had just built an 8 coster on their C. The upgrade I'm going to take is for uh, this leftmost city. Upgrade this from an X3 to an X4 and a coin. Uh, I have that 5 coster shield there. And I'm going to score it off of shields, and I'm going to score it in in-game scoring. Five with an extra coin and an extra victory point being scored twice is 10, 11, 12 more victory points from having taken that upgrade tile. Was that completely necessary? Honestly, probably not. Uh, in retrospect, I really shouldn't have gone for those extra tiles. I really shouldn't have gone for that extra point milking. I should have just rushed the game while I knew I was ahead any extra turn I give him could let him turn around and do some good stuff. Uh, I have regrets in this game. I really do. I played it well. Uh, I end up winning this game, if you can't see that coming. But I didn't do what I probably should have. A lot of times in this game I found balancing when do I want to end it versus 
uh, what am I trying to accomplish versus how well are our current end of the game objectives going? It's really important. The final thing that's going to come up here once the replay catches up is buying these tile tokens. Since I was purchasing a random type, I'm never going to be scoring that type and getting that object. But I don't want to end up with uh, three pairs of objects before I've scored everything. Scoring the land tiles is easy. It doesn't give me any objects. But scoring the shields and scoring Viragio do give me tiles. So what I'm ultimately going to do, you'll see better once the board is updated to where the game currently is before I clicked on one of my... Uh, what do you call that? Bookmarks. Is I'm going to score something and I'm going to buy a different type of token from the supply so that I end up with three of one type and three of another type. That is not three complete pairs. And then the next turn, I can score a different way to fill in four and gain two of the other up to five and I can buy the last one here. So I'm going to end the game with six of one type and four of another type, which is five complete pairs of objects for 25 bonus points from this objective. I'm going to kind of maximize that really well. Um, I was pretty proud of managing my tiles that way, my uh, object tiles. But Daryl is fairly new to this game. I've been teaching him a lot. But he didn't think to block me. If he'd have bought this flag or this coat of arms, he'd have cost me that five point bonus. He'd have got himself a one point bonus. It does cost ten coins, which is essentially two victory points. So he'd have lost a point, but he would have kept me from gaining a much higher net. I'll leave you to do the math on exactly what the net is. I'd have paid two for it, it'd have gotten me an extra five, but I already had one. So basically I paid three points in to gain two points net. Whereas he could pay one net to stop me from gaining that two net. Really he'd have only gotten a one point swing overall. I guess that's not nearly as important as I thought it was. But still you want to mess with your opponents whenever you can in this game. Okay, I have all of my things down. I'm going to start doing that scoring that I was talking about. Let me just hit this. Pretty sure... It's going to let me start doing things. Cool. So I score this upgrade, and it gets me a lot of victory points. Where does it say how many victory points? 58 victory points for scoring the land tiles. Then I'm going to score Villa, getting 31 victory points and 27 coins, 3 coat of arms. But you'll notice I'm not going to buy a coat of arms. I'm going to buy that flag. So now I have 3 and 3, and the game ending condition has not quite been met. So now, on my next turn, I can score the city that I had three buildings in, and get 19 victory points, 38 coins, and then two more symbols and a flag. I can buy the last coat of arms, filling out my six and four, giving me a really nice raw victory point count. He gets one more turn to do what he can, so he scores again, gained a lot of points, and uh, now we see the final game scoring. So scored victory points. I went for land tiles, he went for city tiles. So it's not surprising that my victory points were higher raw. Lands tend to be worth more. However, he did go for more victory point cities than I did, so he could have potentially caught here. But here's where the important things are. Since I went for coin-based cities, I had a lot of coins and a lot of money there, 45. You'll notice I was able to balance that to a nice multiple of five. Yay! Anyway, it doesn't matter. Object card. I got five complete sets of pairs for five points each. He only got two. Notice he has three crowns and three gates, and the crown and gate were both out here. If he had spent any of those 24 coins, he'd have lost two points in coins and gained three points on the object card. But he'd have also lost one for other object. So he'd have gained two points for each one of those he bought. He should have done that. Still some gaining. Um, but he didn't understand how buying the objects work off the board. Hopefully he does now. Sorry to single you out a little here in this video, Daryl. This was a, a learning game for both of us a bit. I'm still very new to this, but I really liked the game. Uh, building card. This was the one with the eight costers. You'll notice I have two eight costers out here. Each of those were worth 13. 
and then I have an eight coster over here worth the other four, giving me 30 total. His eight coster was only one in Luca, but it was worth more than any individual one of mine. The bonus points card for scoring your biggest cities, he scored Luca and whatever this thing's called and got really good points there, 50. I scored Luca and Viragio, but Viragio is coin based, not victory point based. So even with both of us having them upgraded, his was definitely a lot better than mine. I had more value there. I had, what, 16, 19. He only had 11, and he still scored more on the bonus point card. We both had this city, and mine was even upgraded to kind of... So I had a lot more value, a lot more upgrade, but doing Luca, just Luca alone, was worth that many more points, that many more points. It's a really good place to go. Uh, that's the game. That's how it works. That's how you score and what a normal game will look like. I hope this was helpful. Blah, blah, blah. Turtler 7 stuff.